Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Harsh Mali Khan. Last video, I have completed Partnership Accounts 1. Now in this uh, second chapter, Partnership Accounts 2, I'm going to explain you about dissolution of firm and sale to a company. First of all, what do you mean by dissolution? Dissolution means stopping the business. That means uh, 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 removing the relationship of all the partners. According to Partnership Act, dissolution of partnership between all partners of a firm is called dissolution. That means the relationship between all the partners is coming to an end. The partnership is dissolved, wound up, closed. Then it implies complete breakdown of relationship of partners between all the partners. So in a partnership, the relationship of partners will be closed. Then the business of the firm comes to an end. Uh, firm's books of accounts are closed. This is the meaning of the term dissolution of firm. Now, uh, at the time of dissolution of firm, all the assets are realized. That means assets are sold away and the liabilities are paid off. From the money, the liabilities are paid off and the accounts of the partners are settled. So on dissolution, three things are going to happen. First of all, assets are realized. Secondly, liabilities are paid off. And thirdly, partners' accounts are settled. Now, a partnership firm is dissolved in the following uh, five cases. In these cases, the partnership firm is dissolved. First case, the partners agree that the firm should be dissolved because partnership is made from an agreement. Similarly, when all the partners agree, when all the partners agree to dissolve the firm, the partnership firm will be dissolved. Then all the partners except one will become insolvent. That means only one partner is left, the other, all other partners have become insolvent. Then automatically the partnership will be dissolved. The business come, becomes illegal. So earlier the business was legal, but due to the pa passing of a law, the business has become illegal. Now automatically the business will be dissolved. In case of partnership at will, the partners gives notice of his intention to dissolve it. When the partnership is at will, then one of the partner has to give notice to the other partners that we should dissolve the partnership firm. Lastly, the court order for dissolution. Under certain circumstances, the court has the power to give order to the partnership firm to dissolve the firm. These are the cases when the partnership firm is dissolved. Now, what are the entries? When the partnership firm is dissolved, a new account is opened called realization account and all the assets will be transferred to liabilities all the uh, transferred to realization all the liabilities will also be transferred to realization the first entry for transfer of assets assets will show debit balance now if you want to close you have to credit the asset account is credited realization is debited the entry will be realization account debit assets account credit while passing this entry you have to remember each asset should be transferred individually separately and don't transfer cash and bank balance if the cash and bank balance is taken over by one of the partner then it should be transferred otherwise cash and bank balance should not be transferred to realization then assets should be transferred at their book values book values mean balance sheet values so these points you have to remember while passing the first entry second entry transfer the liabilities to realization liabilities will show credit balance if you want to close debit it so debit liabilities, credit realization, debit liabilities, debit provision. If any provision for doubtful debts are there, that provision should be transferred, debited and realization account should be created. Now, again, for passing this entry, five points you have to remember, uh, liabilities and provision should be transferred at book values. Book values means balance sheet values, all the liabilities and provision should be transferred. Secondly, each liability and provision should be transferred individually separately every liability should be transferred accumulated profits like reserves or pro profit and loss account balance should not be transferred to realization and loans account current account capital account of the partners should not be transferred to realization only assets and liabilities should be transferred to realization now come to for realizing the assets when the assets are sold away cash is realized so bank account debit realization account credit for selling the assets, for assets taken over by partner. Sometimes one of the asset is not sold, but partner has taken. So entry for that is partner's capital account debit and realization account credit. 
if it is sold bank account debit realization credit if the asset is taken over by the partner partner's capital account debit and realization credit next comes for payment of liabilities when the liabilities are paid liabilities debit realization oh, sorry realization debit bank credit because we are paying for the liability cash is going out so bank account is credited realization debit for liability agreed to be discharged by one of the partner one of the partner has taken over that this liability will be paid off by him so entry will be realization account debit partner's capital account credit because partner has taken up the responsibility for expenses of realization for doing all these winding up procedure some realization expenses are paid so entry will be realization account debit bank account credit for transfer of profit on realization after passing all these entries the realization account may show profit or may show loss if there is a profit the entry will be realization account debit partners capital account credit for transfer of profit realization account debit partners capital account credit for payment of partners loan if in the balance sheet there is a partners loan on the liability side that will be paid off the so partners loan account debit bank account credit then for transferring accumulated profits if in the balance sheet liability side reserve fund general reserve or pnl account balance is given those accumulated profits should be transferred to partners capital the so entry will be reserve reserves account debit or profit and loss account debit or to partners capital account credit for closing capital accounts finally the capital account should be closed by making the payment to the partner the so partners capital account debit bank account credit these are the entries to be passed at the time of dissolution of a firm now one more topic insolvency of a partner sometimes a partner becomes insolvent insolvent means a person who is unable to pay all his liabilities a person who is not in a position to pay all his liabilities in other words liabilities are more than assets that person is called insolvent suppose in a partnership firm one of the partner has become insolvent then what is the procedure in accounting now we are going to study garner versus murray rule in examination very frequently they will ask the question regarding explain the garner versus murray rule so this is an english case where whenever a partner has become insolvent how to adjust the loss on insolvency among other partners that is specified by garner versus murray rule so according to that solvent partners have to bear the loss due to insolvency in proportion to their capital see here. suppose a b c d e five partners are there in those five partners e has become insolvent and there is a loss from e because e has become insolvent he cannot be able to bring any capital so his capital is showing a debit balance so that means the firm has to get 50000 rupees from e now this is a loss insolvency loss so how to bear that insolvency loss the remaining partner a b c d should bear the insolvency loss in their capital ratio normally other uh, losses will be shared in profit sharing ratio but uh, in lost on account of insolvency will be borne in the capital ratio that is the provision given by garner versus murray rule and uh, if any of the other solvent partners capital is showing a debit balance then that partner should not bear example a b c d e e has become insolvent and the amount due from e is 50000 now who has to bear a b c d these four partners have to bear the loss but d's account is showing a debit balance d's capital account is showing a debit balance that d should not bear that loss only a b c should bear the loss of insolvency of e d will not bear because d's capital is showing a debit balance that is according to garner versus murray rule and one more point in this uh, rule is the the partners the partners should bring the solvent partners should bring in cash equal to the share of loss whatever is the share of loss that much cash the solvent partners should bring but in reality no solvent partner will bring only adjustment entry will be passed as if he has brought the cash 
that this is the uh, Garner versus Murray rule on account of insolvency of a party. That's it. So in this chapter, two topics are the dissolution of firm and sale to a company. So, so far I have discussed about dissolution of firm. Now sale to a company. Sometimes a partnership firm has sold its business to a joint stock company. The company has purchased the business of partnership. Now how to close the accounts of partnership? In this case, the amount receivable from the company is called purchase consideration. The purchase consideration is the amount payable by the company to the partnership firm for taking over the business. So how to calculate the purchase consideration? Three methods are given. Lump sum method, net payment method and net assets method. The lump sum method means the company will give a lump sum amount that we will purchase your company for rupees 50 lakh. That 50 lakh is called the lump sum amount which is quoted by the purchasing company to the partnership. Second method, net payment method. In net payment method, different sources will be given. The purchasing company has said that we will pay 10 lakh rupees cash. We will issue 40,000 worth of equity shares. We will issue 10,000 worth of debentures. These are the different forms of payment which company is making to the partnership. We have to add up all the items. How much cash is paid, how much shares are issued, how much debentures are issued. That is called net payment method. Net assets method. In net assets method, we calculate the net worth of the partnership. How to calculate net worth of the partnership? Take all the assets of the partnership minus all the liabilities, outside liabilities of the partnership. We get the net value of the business. That is called net assets method. So these three methods are applied to calculate the purchase consideration. Then what are the general entries to be passed in partnership when the partnership sold the business to the company? First entry, transfer all assets to realization, just like the dissolution. So entry will be realization account debit, assets account credit individually. So by passing this entry, all assets will get closed at book values. Second, transfer of liabilities. Liabilities account debit, provision account debit and realization credit. By passing this entry, liabilities will get closed, provision will get closed and we have transferred to Realize it. Third entry, purchase consideration due. The PC has to be received. From whom? From the company. The purchasing company account debit, realization account credit. Purchasing company debit, realization account credit. This is the third entry for purchase consideration due. Now purchase consideration received. When the purchase consideration is received, debit all the items which are received. So we have received cash bank balance plus equity shares in purchasing company, preference shares in purchasing company, debentures in purchasing company all debited and purchasing company should be credited. This is the entry for PC received. Five and four entries are over. Fifth entry sale of assets not taken over by the purchasing company. Some of the assets of the partnership are not purchased, not taken over by purchasing company. Then these assets will be sold in the market. So entry will be bank account debit realization credit. Similarly, for payment of liabilities not taken over by the purchasing company, some of the liabilities are not taken over by the purchasing company. Then in that case, the entry will be realization account debit bank account credit. For payment of realization expenses, if in the problem realization expenses are given, so entry realization account debit bank account credit. Then profit on realization. After passing all these entries, we have to find out whether profit or loss on realization. If there is profit, realization account debit, then uh, partner's capital account credit. Realization debit, partner's capital account debit. For transfer of accumulated profit, if in the balance sheet, general reserve, reserve fund, profit and loss account is given on liability side, debit all those things, general reserve account debit, profit and loss account debit, partner's capital account credit. Last one for payment of partner's loan. If in the balance sheet liability side partner's loan is there, the partner's loan account debit, bank account credit. Last one for settlement of partner's capital accounts. The entry will be partner's capital account debit, bank account credit, 
equity shares in purchasing company credit debentures in purchasing company credit so whatever pc we have received that pc we are settling among the partners that's it so these are the entries on sale of a partnership firm to a company that's all so in this video i have explained you two topics dissolution of firms and sale of a partnership firm to a company